The Falklands are divided into two islands, West Falkland and East Falkland, and in the middle of these two islands there is the Falkland Sound. And as you can see on the map, the Falkland Sound is what cuts these Falkland Islands into two. They look like they should connect, but the sound divides them. So in today's video, let's investigate how the Falkland Sound formed. So to understand how the Falkland Sound formed, we have to understand how the entirety of the Falkland Islands formed. So the Falkland Islands start their history along the southern coast of Africa. Yeah, that's right. The Falkland Islands, which are now 4,500 miles away from Africa, have their geologic journey starting right next to it. So how is this possible? Well, around 400 million years ago, the supercontinent of Guandana existed, which was essentially India, Australia, Antarctica, Africa, and South America all connected into one supercontinent. And this southern section here, in between Africa, Antarctica, and South America, is where the Falkland Islands started. As you can see, the Falkland Islands are displayed here on this map, although they looked much more different than they would today. This diagram is just trying to morph current shapes into roughly how they would look in the past. But what evidence do we have that the Falkland Islands actually had their origins around South Africa? Well, it all has to do with the geology of the oldest rocks on the Falkland Islands. So the oldest rocks on the Falkland Islands are known as the Cape Meredith Complex down here. And they are comprised of gneiss and granite. And this matches perfectly to the Natal Metamorphic Province in South Africa, specifically by Durban, suggesting that these two areas were once connected. And the actual land of the Falklands today were created alongside the Cape Fold Mountains in South Africa today. So here's just a rough diagram around 510 million years ago. And during this time, a major rift had broken out, separating what is known as the Falklands Plateau from Africa. And this rifting area got filled with water and formed what is known as the Agolas Sea. However, eventually, the Paleo-Pacific Ocean started subducting under the Falklands Plateau and moved it back towards Africa. So here's just a diagram showing this process. So here you can see 500 million years ago, the rifting is bringing the Falklands Plateau and Africa apart from each other, and in the middle we have the Agolas Sea. However, as the Paleo-Pacific Ocean plate collided with the Falklands Plateau, it rapidly moved it back towards Africa, and eventually caused the sediments in the Agolas Sea to raise, forming the folded mountains of the Cape Fold Mountains that we can see today. And these large Cape Fold Mountains actually acted as the foothills for the Falklands Plateau, a much higher mountain range that would eventually become the Falkland Islands. But now we are at 290 million years ago, and the Falklands Plateau is attached to southern Africa which is obviously not an island. So how did the Falklands become an island? Well, it is all due to the breakup of Guandana, which started around 200 million years ago. And this was caused by the Karu Farrar Large Igneous Provinces. And large igneous provinces are essentially regions where magma rapidly erupts from Earth's crust, forming rifts within continents. And so this rifting caused modern-day South America, Africa, and Antarctica to all split from each other and slowly spread further apart. And during this process, a small block of crust broke free from this Cape Fold Belt and formed the Falklands Microplate, which the Falklands currently lie on. And so as the oceans were expanding further and further, this Falklands microplate rapidly moved over to its position in modern-day South America. And interestingly, the Falkland Islands also flipped upside down. We know this because the Cape Meredith Complex is on the southern side of the island today, However, this is not possible when considering that the rocks from Cape Meredith were the same rocks as the Natal Metamorphic Province. But this entire rotation of the Falkland Islands is just such an interesting topic that I think it warrants its own video, so if you'd like to see that, please comment below. But now we know how the Falklands arrived in their rough position near South America. But that still doesn't explain how the Falklands got cut in half, because as I previously mentioned, the Falklands were one solid block of mountain ridges even when they got rifted from the African continent. So what happened to form the Falkland Sound and split these two islands apart? 
Well, this all has to do with faulting. So from 130 to 120 million years ago, when the continents looked like this, a rift formed in the location of the Falkland Sound. And this fault was specifically a dextral strike slip fault. So a dextral strike slip fault is a fault where the land masses to either side of the fault line are moving horizontally along the fault line. And despite what this diagram might suggest, the dextral in our case means that West Falkland moved south and East Falkland moved north. So in the case of the Falkland Islands, this strike slip fault is named the Falkland Sound Fault or the Hornby Mountains Fault. You can see how East Falkland moved further north and West Falkland moved further south. If this fault wasn't here, then these two land masses would likely be connected today. And this strike slip fault is not the entire story. The other process is erosion. So a fault line creates weakness and stress for the rocks that it forms in. And so along this Hornby Mountains Fault, there was a lot of weakened rocks here. And of course, throughout the 120 million years that this fault has existed for, it has gotten greatly eroded down. And so this created a central valley region of the Falkland Island. However, during the last ice age, the Falkland Islands were still connected because sea levels were as much as 120 meters lower. But as the sea levels rose, as the ice caps were melting, it filled this central valley and separated the Falkland Islands like how we see it today. So that's how West and East Falkland got separated. But there's one more thing you might notice about the Falklands that's interesting. It looks like there's another place where the Falklands are cut in half, specifically in East Falkland here. Here in East Falkland, you have the Choiseul Sound and the Grantham Sound. And the only thing separating these two sounds is this small isthmus between the two sections. And this is named the East Falkland Isthmus. And this isthmus almost looks man-made, but it actually isn't. And surprisingly, these sounds that almost divide East Falkland were formed in a different way than the Falkland sound. It was created solely through erosion. So here's a map of the different geologic formations of the Falkland Islands. And as you can see on East Falkland, the northern section is home to the previous Cape Fold Belt Mountains. And this means that the land up here primarily consists of quartzite. However, this southern green section of the Falklands is part of the Lafonia group, a much younger group of sandstone and mudstone that formed in the Foreland Basin of the Falklands. And a Foreland Basin is a water-filled basin formed from mountains compressing land down and another plate being subducted under the mountains. So in the case of the Lafonia group here, we have the Cape Fold Mountains, which had a lot of their land eroded away and it filled this basin. And this eventually got turned into mudstone and sandstones over many years. And so this Foreland Basin, which has formed the mudstone and sandstones of Lafonia today, is important for two reasons. Firstly, sandstone and mudstone is much weaker than quartzite, so it can get eroded away easier. And the second reason it's important is that it created lower land in the area where we find the two sounds today. And this lower elevation allowed rivers to flow down the modern day sound and into the ocean. And of course, this eroded away the weaker sandstones and mudstones and created an even deeper valley. And then these two river valleys got filled with water as sea levels were rising after the last glacial maximum. In fact, today you can see the two rivers that would have flowed different directions into the ocean. These rivers in Lafonia would have drained into the Schoisel Sound right here, and then these small streams in the northern part of East Falkland would have drained into the Grantham Sound area here. So that is the fascinating geology of how the Falkland Islands formed and how they got split in half. The Falklands are old mountains that got rifted from a continent, moved about 5,000 miles away, had a fault form in the middle of them, and that fault got heavily eroded and flooded. And not to mention the Falklands flipping 180 degrees upside down along the journey. And again, if you want to see that video, comment below. But that's going to be all for today's video. If you have any video suggestions, comment them below or join my Discord. And if you learned something new, please subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video.